hello everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and finally i am starting with the planets for each and every ascendants and today is aries so i have already made the video on aries ascendants how to study an aries ascendant so if you have not watched it then please go and watch it you will find the video in the comments and also in the description section of this video okay and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want to know that how your ascendant is behaving or any other area in your life regarding marriage or relationships or affairs or career or whatever it is or health then you can go to my website to book a reading personally one to one with me you will find the link of the website in the description section of my videos okay and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and he will help you to understand how the planets for an aries ascendant behave so now we had uh, discussed earlier that every ascendant is made in a particular way that there are planets which rule specific houses okay so which means that for an aries ascendant saturn is ruling the 10th house and the 11th house now if you are a taurus ascendant it will rule the 9th house and the 10th house so the planet is the same but the rulership changes so depending on the planet's rulership it will give results okay so let's discuss about aries ascendants here so for aries ascendants venus rules which houses let's talk of venus first venus rules the second house and the seventh house so venus is an extremely important planet when it comes to finances and marriage and home family especially because both the second house and seventh house these two are houses of family second house shows the combined assets of the family wealth etc and seventh house shows our interactions with people and our marriage our relationships prominent relationships all of this is these are shown by the seventh house so wherever venus is placed it will modify the results or it will give the results of the second house and the seventh house accordingly okay so which means that uh, for example if a uh, venus uh, if a, if for aries ascendant venus is placed in suppose the fourth house then the focus of the family and the relationships will go to the fourth house wherever the lord is sitting of any house the focus shifts to that house so suppose venus is in cancer in the fourth house then it will happen that the family is always pushing you to buy a land or to study fourth house is also the house of education okay now depending on the nakshatra within cancer is is it punarvasu or pushya or ashlesha the results will vary and depending on which pada it is in that will also change the story and suppose venus is in some other house like the 10th house then the focus of the family and the marriage will be on your career always your family members will push you towards the career prospects and marriage etc and then let's talk of mercury here mercury is a ruler of the dusthana houses the third house which is a mild dusthana because it gives us struggles because it's the house of new initiations whenever we want to do something new there is a quite decent amount of struggle involved in it and it also rules the 6th house which is one of the most difficult dusthanas not the most but yes it is still a very difficult house even in kaliyuga so wherever mercury is sitting it will fulfill its agenda of the 3rd house and the 6th house accordingly so suppose mercury is sitting in the 11th house for example then it can happen that when it comes to your friends or elder siblings you can have some tussle there some competition can be there within your friends that can happen of course uh, depending on where saturn is which is the lord of the 11th house that will finally decide what is happening and suppose mercury is sitting in the 7th house so the third lord sitting in the 7th or the 11th house or the 7th lord in third or 11th or 11th lord in third or 7 these positions whenever the lords of the trines are sitting in each other's houses trines means not only the houses 1 5 and 9 2 6 10 are also trines 3 7 11 are also trines 4 8 12 are also trines so whenever the 
rulers of the third seventh and eleventh houses are sitting in each other's houses then this creates too many desires so it can happen that there is excessive focus on physical things like sexuality within the marriage and if that domain is compromised then the marriage can have some issues it can happen or there can be too much focus on meeting other people excessively indulging with the opposite sex recklessly without any restriction that can also be there now mercury is also the sixth lord so if sixth lord is in the seventh depending on other things of course there can be some quarrels which happen within the marriage okay i'm not saying divorce again do not write that i have sixth lord in the seventh or seventh lord in the sixth i'll be divorced no it's not like the divorce is a big thing so many things are to be seen into consideration but yes even then if the sixth lord is in the seventh then there can be some uh, quarrels which come up within the marriage and if sixth lord mercury is placed in the fifth house then there can be some quarrels with the children the first child which you have and then let's talk of jupiter <laughs> jupiter is a very interesting planet for aries ascendants jupiter not only rules the ninth house which is a great house <laughs> because it's the house of god and spirituality but it also rules the 12th house which is the house of moksha loss liberation etc so wherever jupiter is placed there jupiter will give spirituality along with the losses which means that the mool trikon sign of jupiter is sagittarius it is falling in the 9th house and the own sign of jupiter is falling in the 12th house okay so because of that the results of the 9th house will be more prominent then the results of the 12th house so for example if the 9th lord and 12th lord jupiter for aries lagna is sitting in the 7th house then it can happen that there are too many expenses in your wedding it can happen or you can get married to a foreigner depending on where venus is placed because a 12th house also shows foreign things which we are not aware of and the 9th lord is also showing things like father gurus etc so it can happen that you go to foreign lands and you meet a guru if the 9th and 12th houses are having linkage and the 7th house is linked for example you can get married and then go to foreign lands and then you might meet a guru there these things can happen or your spiritual life could im improve after marriage or it can happen that your father is focusing too much on your spouse it can happen sometimes or your spouse can feel overwhelmed with your father because ninth lord shows where the father is focusing the placement of the ninth lord so if the ninth lord is in the seventh then it can happen that the things which your father decides within your marriage and that can happen at times okay or you might have to marry somebody who your father wants these things can also happen i have seen sometimes not in a wrong way but sometimes the father may uh, push you towards marrying somebody or the father may push you after marriage that oh now you are married you should come back to here to india or go back to us or whatever it is that will depend on the chart and because it's also the 12th lord it will also give some losses okay financial losses or any kind of psychological loss but for spirituality is very good because both 9th and 12th houses are houses of spirituality so for for aries ascendants it is best that wherever jupiter is placed depending on other placements in the chart you can give some donations okay so for examples <coughs> uh, if jupiter is exalted in the fourth house because it gets exalted in cancer and for aries cancer is the fourth house so if jupiter is placed in the sign of cancer for an aries ascendant it can happen that for education you might have to go to foreign lands because fourth house is the house of education or your mother can be one of the great guides spiritual teachers for you or your uh, mother can be very spiritual in nature that can also happen if the fourth lord is also in the ninth or if other things support and especially if mars is also supporting this because mars is the lagna lord of course so this is how you have to study okay then let us talk of saturn saturn is ruling which house saturn is ruling the 10th house and the 11th house so these two houses are the most important houses in kali yuga because they deal with finances name fame status authority power position and that is what people want in kali yuga they are running behind all these things so wherever saturn is placed we will be focusing in that area to gain 
money to gain name fame status so for example if saturn is placed in gemini in the third house for an aries ascendant then you will always notice that these people always want to do things like creative self expression writing books giving lectures giving speeches or doing something with the hand but that also includes writing as i said and then anything related to the third house journalism communication and they will earn from there and they will have success in competitive exams and interviews basically okay more than competitive exams interviews because third house also can show competition at times because it shows new new things which you have to do okay so if saturn is in the third house then these flavors can come and if saturn is in the ninth house for example then you will try to fulfill your career ambitions through the ninth house which means that you will uh, like to uh, take in take to things like education because ninth house tenth lord in the ninth can show education you can be a great teacher these things will modify the results okay and then which is the planet remaining okay sun sun is a very important planet for aries ascendants because sun is the planet which gets exalted in the ascendant okay sun gets exalted in aries so wherever sun is sitting you will have great interest towards that area why do i say that because fifth house shows our interests fifth house shows those things which we like to do so wherever the fifth lord is sitting we will try to fulfill that agenda through that house so if fifth lord is is in the seventh this is considered to be a placement for love marriage why because the person is <coughs> obsessed with the opposite sex when the fifth lord is in the seventh so the person always keeps uh, continues to uh, run behind the opposite sex if he's a man he will be running behind a lady messaging her all the time and if it's a girl then maybe a man and then because of that the person cannot stay without the company of the opposite sex and then the person finally ends up finding a partner and then marries him or her okay these things can happen and if fifth lord is in the ninth it's fantastic for spirituality the person loves to chant mantras loves to associate with gurus the person loves to talk talk about spirituality and if fifth lord is in the fourth that is also fantastic for things like uh, education and if fifth lord sits in the 10th house in this case so if sun is sitting in the 10th house then it's considered to be very good because sun will get its directional strength there so sun is very strong in the 10th house so these people will have great name fame position authority within their field depending on the other things of course not just by one thing we can decide everything okay and then we have moon moon is also a very important planet because it is not only having the mind but it is also the ruler of the fourth house so it also shows the mother so wherever the fourth lord is placed we will find great we will always try to find happiness inner satisfaction from that area so if suppose fourth lord moon is placed in libra so for aries libra is the seventh house then you will notice that these people always are seeking out relationships and whatever they have in life or whatever they don't have they always want to find happiness from relationships so for these people if aries ascendants have moon in the seventh house for them it is very difficult to stay single sometimes or if they get uh, into a breakup or a divorce it's very difficult for them to handle because they are too much attached sometimes not in a wrong sense but they try to be happy from that house and if moon is in the fourth house itself then they love to stay in the home and luxuries and all these things are there they love to do all this and if moon sits in the 11th house then they will love love to associate with friends so these are the ways by which you can study and then you have mars itself mars is the ruler of the ascendant and mars is the ruler of the 8th house aries and scorpio is ruled by mars so wherever mars is sitting the entire focus of the ascendant goes towards that because the ascendant lord is the ruler of the chart he is the controller of the chart wherever he is sitting the entire focus is going there so if the ascendant lord is sitting in the fourth house the person is focusing on property education mother etc things like this and if the lagna lord mars 
goes to the tenth house then it gets exalted in capricorn and it also obtains directional strength sun and mars gets digbali in the tenth house as you all know so if mars is in the tenth house that's fantastic for an aries ascendant and even in transit if mars is going towards capricorn which is happening now because now mars is retrograde and within the next two days it is going to be direct in capricorn so all Ari aries ascendants right now thumbs up congratulations your lagna lord is going to be direct now and you will feel extremely powerful so if the lagna lord is uh, for an aries ascendant sits in the 10th house these people are very much focused towards their name fame status career power position authority all these things and if the lagna lord is in the 10th then they will always prefer to do their own work this can be consulting or business or anything it can be that will depend on the chart of course uh, for example the nakshatra if sh if shravan is there so if mars is in shravan for example these people can be good counselors they can hear people because shravan th has things to do with hearing so this is how you study the ascendant so mars also rules the eighth house so there will also be some sudden occurrences which will occur so if mars is sitting in the 10th house for example although it is in direction strength but it is also the eighth lord so the eighth lord will also give its results okay so there will be sudden rise in his career or it can happen that after somebody dies he rises if the eighth lord is in the 10th that can happen that after somebody perishes you have a rise in career okay now who is that somebody that god knows that will depend on the chart but it is there in charts of many people i can quote examples now but it will take long time to explain them or somebody gets defamy and then you get promotion that can happen or somebody's health spoils or somebody's reputation is spoiled yes or somebody runs into a scandal or mishap with some somebody or something then you get rise in status it, it can happen if mars is in the 10th but because it is also the lagna lord so you will also be geared towards working related to those areas not only it's the eighth lord it is also the lagna lord okay so it is the uh, it's very important to see where mars is and if mars sits in the fourth house then it gets de debilitated because it is in cancer so if mars is in the fourth for an aries ascendant these people can be too much focused towards having a soft and easy and peaceful life which doesn't do good with the nature of mars so because of that they can have issues like uh, self-doubt or inferiority complex or not having too much confidence within themselves that can happen okay so these these are the ways by which you study the aries ascendant so depending on the placements and individual horoscope and the aspects and all other things the answers will vary okay so if you have not watched the video on Aries Ascendance, then you can go and watch. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know that what the planets are ruling for an Aries Ascendant and what the how they are going to behave. Okay. So depending on that, you will see the results of an Aries Ascendant. All right. So if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation regarding your ascendant or your sun or moon or venus jupiter 7th house 10th house or anything else then you can always go to my website and book a reading you will find the link to my website in the description section of my videos okay you will find it below until next time wish you good luck and somebody was asking me which will be the next ascendant I don't know, but it's definitely not Taurus. I will change it. <laughs> okay, because Pisces Ascendants, they have to wait for a long time. So I don't want that to happen. But I don't know who will be the last to come. But it's definitely not Taurus. The next, it will be somebody else. All right. So there you go. Wish you good luck. Bye bye. See you.